Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to do another small party beer. This is one of the ones that was released on the 21st of September 2018 through Seistem Balaga here in Sweden. And for this one we're going to return to Estonia once again. This time we're going back to the capital city Tallinn and we're revisiting a brewery you've seen me review a couple of things from now. I believe this is my third review from this one. So we're going to go back to Pui La Prulicoda and we're having a taste of the read it today which is a double IPA coming in at 8.5 percent so it should be a really nice beer this one this is the first IPA that I'm trying from Puella the last one I think it was the Italo banger and I also had one that was this black IPA that had a lot of berries and things like that in it which was a really really nice beer as well Puella seem to be the masters of adding things to beer if you like I think that's probably a good way to kind of sum up what Puella do but I think this one is a little bit more of a kind of straight up offering from them if that makes sense but a very 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 good brewery and um, probably the best known Estonian craft brewery these days outside of Estonia itself. I think this is probably the most well known Estonian craft beer name throughout Europe these days. I think some of their beers have reached over to America and things like that. I saw a friend of mine drinking one of the Puyula beers. I think it might have actually been the Italo Banger which I reviewed. He was drinking that away over in Texas or America somewhere. Um, so a very well known Estonian craft brewery these days. They do some great stuff and I highly recommend you check them out if you get the chance. So Anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the links to my other reviews that I've done from Puy La Prulicoda before. Very first, uh, sorry, I think the third time rather, that I'm reviewing one of their beers and there's uh, going to be a lot more coming, I'm sure. I do want to get back to Estonia at some point. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Estonian beers that I've reviewed for you. I'm adding to that one whenever I can and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Puyla Prulicoda then. So as I've told you before, Puyla that are based in Tallinn in Estonia and the company was founded by Peter Cake, M. Parrell, Graham Normans and they were later joined by Teed Pannanen as well. But the group went on a fact-finding trip to Brewdog in Scotland and it was there that they encountered Chris Pilkington who joined them as their head brewer. He'd actually graduated in marketing but was a really avid home brewer and was very keen to join Puella when he met these guys and heard what they were up to. So he actually worked for Brewdog I think um, in the early days but has of course moved to Puella now. So they opened their brewery in May 2014 in the Noma district of the city and it had an initial capacity of around 12 hectolitres but this has since been scaled up considerably since then uh, but their export started in 2015 and as I say these guys are now widely known throughout Europe they attend a lot of different festivals and they're probably the best known Estonian craft brewery these days and from what I gather there really is an, uh, a kind of thriving craft beer scene in Estonia these days you know there's uh, a lot of things going on in Tallinn there's a lot of things in Tartu as well Pernu I still need to try a beer from Pernu, the southern, the summer capital of Estonia. But it's a beautiful country, the people are very, very nice. It's still quite cheap as well, actually, but you know, um, Estonia has some crazy things going on. It's the, the most wired the most wired country in Europe. Um, you know, they've got this whole e-residency scheme and things. They're a it's a really interesting little place, and I think um, out of all the former you know, communist countries, if you like, they've got the most recovered economy, but it's a lovely place to go and visit, and I highly recommend that you do. I really want to go back to Estonia at some point in the, the fairly near future future and when I do you can rest assured that I will stock up on uh, a good number of Estonian craft beers most likely from the breweries that I've not come across before but yeah that's all you really need to know about Esto uh, about um, Puy La Puy Coda just now do go and check out Estonia if you get the chance like I say a lovely place but let's get on to the actual beer tasting itself so all the links to the brewery website and stuff are in the description below you can follow these guys on Facebook they are fairly prolific so they will keep you up to date with all the different goings on there so yeah on to this beer itself then so this one is an 8.5% double IPA. It's hopped with Cascade, Citra, El Dorado, HBC 431, Mosaic and Victoria's Secret and it's got a malt base of Pale Munich and it's also got some flaked wheat in there as well. So like I say, this is one of the more kind of straight up offerings you're going to get from Puyla. Most of the beers have got berries and loads of other random stuff added to them. Um, the hop that we've not encountered in this one is HBC 431. That one comes from Yakima Valley over in California. It was um, created by the G 
John, but I think it's John has they're called, and it's supposed to give you a nice kind of peachy element to your beer, so we'll see how that comes out in this one. But I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork as well before we open the beer up. There you can see there's some nice dogs having a chill time there. You know, you can never go wrong with putting dogs on beer labels, actually. Really, really nice, this one. So, there you can see, there's the Puyula bottle cap on this one. Sometimes you'll get the same bottle cap, but in black, from what I remember. I think their stouts and stuff tend to have the black bottle cap. Um, I don't know if there's other colours as well, there probably are. But it says on the side here, a dank and fruity double IPA using, uh, brewed using New England yeast and two twenty six grams of hops per litre, so it will be a bit of a hoppy beast this one, but like I say, 8.5% double IPA, I'll turn my computer off because I don't need my brewery notes anymore, um, so yeah, best before the 31st of January 2019, so without further ado, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then, incidentally this is a 330 milliliter bottle, and it just looks a little bit taller of course, but let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting, as you can see, oh. That smells nice. A little bit of a watermelony note from this one. You really can get a little bit of watermelon on this beer as you open it up. It's a big, you can smell the fruits on this one as you open it up. But yeah, look at that lovely kind of orangey colour this one. If I hold it up to the light, yeah, it's just, it's a straight up kind of orangey amber colour this. There's a solid finger of a frothy, I would say perfectly white head on this one, there's some lovely fruity notes, for me it's the mosaic that's really jumping out of this one, it's the tangerines and the blueberries from the, the mosaic that's jumping out of this one, there's also a little bit of the watermelon in there as well, which is really nice, I think the watermelon's the El Dorado, if I'm remembering correctly, I always remember that giving you a little bit of a kind of watermelon you know as well, so, but yeah, it looks like a lovely lovely beer, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of the head there, if I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see there is a degree of transparency, but it is quite a hazy IPA, this one by no means is it a sort of, um, is it, you know, one of these kind of, how do you say, the sort of treehouse trillium type hazies, this one looks as if, and this seems to be the trend with these New England beers, they seem to be going back a little bit more towards the uh, the west coast mouthfeel, I think, and I do suspect from the colour of this one, that's what will be the case with this, and um, it will have a little bit more of an oily mouthfeel, and I have to admit that's something I've missed, I do miss a good west coast IPA, everything's all about wheat and uh, oats and everything like that in the malt base, but oddly enough, this one doesn't actually have oats, it's just brewed using a New England yeast, but it looks very nice. As I say, some of the fruity aromas coming off of this were really, really lovely. So let's take a closer look at the aroma now and just see how we get on with this one. That one's a fruit bomb. It smells really, really lovely. So like I was saying earlier, there's tangerines in there, that'll be the mosaic. There's definitely mangoes as well and that'll be the citra coming out of this one. But yeah, there's a lot of complexity to this beer. You can smell a little bit of the sharpness from the peaches, I think, in there as well, which is interesting. But passion fruits, yeah, definitely some passion fruit. That's the Victoria's Secret in this one. And there's, the, as I say, there's a, there's a lot of... It, it's interesting because it's got the slightly stronger fruits coming out, but then it's got the lighter, more juicy ones. So as I say, I was saying, there's a little bit of a watermelony note in there, which is interesting. Um, as I say, I think that's the, the El Dorado that kind of gives you that. Um, there's also a bit of the light cheese that you would expect from the... Um, which will be coming from the Citra. And there's also the sort of blueberry notes, which I think come a little bit more from the, uh, the mosaic as well. But yeah, the peaches, I think, coming from the HBC, the 431. I think I said a minute ago that that would come from the Eldorado, but that's lies. It's coming from the, the HBC 431. The Eldorado is a kind of watermelony hop, from what I remember. But it's got a big, fruity, juicy note to it. It's interesting, as I say, the oranges, little touch of grapefruit from the Cascade as well, and the mangoes, they're forming the kind of um, linchpin of the beer. But then you've got all these juicier elements going on. You've got a little bit of pineapple in there too, that'll be the, the Victoria's Secret that's giving you that. There's passion fruit in there as well at the back of the nose with the, the grapefruits and things like I was saying. Those are forming the linchpin of the beers. It starts off with a kind of strong fruit and then it just becomes gradually more juicy actually. The aroma in this one is really interesting so as I always say, take a little bit of time and just enjoy that a little bit before you actually drink the beer. But yeah, with this one, the malt base, you can smell the white wheaty bread. There's a little bit of a, it almost has a little bit of an oaty nose to it, even though there isn't oats actually in it. But you can smell it's big white, bready, it's, it's almost sweet and wheaty, the malt base in this one. So just take a little bit of time and enjoy that aroma before you get stuck into this beer. 
but yeah, lychees, blueberries, you know, a little bit of pineapple and things like that, watermelon in there too. There's a lot going on in this beer, so just take a little bit of time to enjoy the aroma before you get stuck into it. But let's have a taste of this one now. So this one is the Rida Double IPA from Puyo La Prulicoda in Tallinn in Estonia. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanja, Skull, Tervisex. Cheers. That's nice. You know, with Puyula, one of the things with them is always to expect the unexpected, if that makes sense. Um, but with this beer, it's very nice and just straight up. It's a complete different, it's a, you know, it's a change of pace from what I'm normally used to with uh, with Puyula. And it's nice. You know, the IPA that I had, the Black, was it the Black Forest IPA, I want to say it was called, that was a beautiful beer. The Italo Banger was, was an awesome, awesome stout as well. I absolutely loved that beer. This one, and those were one of the beers that I was saying, they always add stuff to them. This one's just a more straight up offering, but it's really well done as well. So it's cool to see that, you know, with both sides of the coin, Puyla can put out some really awesome stuff. Yeah, it really is nice. I mean, the malt base is um, is pretty much what you'd expect. You know, you've got that sort of white, wheaty, bready quality. That blankets the middle of your tongue. You can feel the pale malt in there. It's got a bit of that German smoothness to it. Actually, I would suspect that there is, you know, um, German malt in this one. I think, I, I can't remember if it said there was Munich malt in this beer, but it definitely has that element of um, of German smoothness to it. There's maybe a little tiny touch of an almost biscuity flavour in the middle of the palate, but the malt base is very straight up. There's nothing particularly surprising there. And to be honest, that's one of the things about this beer, I would say. It doesn't do anything surprising, if that makes sense, but it's one of these ones that's just you know well done, if that makes sense. It's not doing anything you wouldn't expect with the style, I would say. So yeah, on the hoppy side of things, because this is where most of the complexity in this beer is coming out, back corners of the palate you've got a little touch of earthiness there, as you come further forward there's maybe a little spread of that earthiness but then there's a good balance between an almost piney, dank, resiny sort of thing when you come towards the front of the palate. You can feel some of those darker flavours, a little bit of a floral aromaticity, then round the very front curve of the palate there's a little bit of a um, lighter grassy sort of thing to this one and then behind the front curve of the tongue that's where you've got that little oily bubble where the juicy fruity notes start to come out of the beer as well but yeah lovely beer this one it's 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 just it's very well balanced it's just a solid beer it really is, it really is very solid. So let's try and put together what's going on with the fruits in this one. So the grapefruits and stuff, I was picking up a little bit of that grapefruit there, you can get a tiny little bit of that, um, but not very much, you know, the Cascade, compared to the other hops that are in this beer, the Cascade's quite low in terms of its alpha acid, I think it's around 7 or 8 percent, um, whereas the other ones that are in this, you know, they're the beasts that are above 10. Um, so you can definitely get the mangoes out of this beer, there's, there is a little bit of passion fruit in there. I think it's the Citra and the Victoria's Secret that are kind of forming the linchpin of the beer. There is a little bit of orangey quality in there, but I think, pardon me, I think the Mosaic takes a little bit of a back seat in this one, which is kind of interesting. On top of that, um, it's more when you start to go into the aftertaste, you start to get a little bit more of the fruity complexities out of this beer. So there's a little bit of a lychee note in there. Definitely some light cheese. That's one of the complexities that you'll get from the uh, from the citra hop in this one. There's a little bit of um, there is definitely a little bit of a watermelon. You know that's the El Dorado I think that's giving you that. Uh, and the blueberries from the mosaic are there right on the tip of the tongue. But you've seen how long it was since I took a sip of the beer, and you can really get all these things kind of coming out on the front part of your palate. There, there's a good, there's a really interesting sort of balance to this beer. Yeah, I like how everything in this one is going together actually, it's, it's, 
it's one of these beers, as I say, it, it's 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 got a lot of complexity in its fruity character, but generally it doesn't deviate from the style too much, and it does everything quite well. But as I say, there's, there's maybe a little touch of pineapple in here as well, um, and that's one of the complexities. I think it comes out a little bit more when your palate fully adjusts to the beer. But yeah, as I say, there's a lot of fruity stuff going on in this one. Early on you're getting mangoes, there's a bit of passion fruit in there, little touch of oranges but not too much and then when you go into the aftertaste you start to get the other things, you get a little bit of watermelon, you get a little bit of the... Um you get a little bit of the lychees and things like that. There's maybe a touch of gooseberry in there as well. You're getting the citron notes out of this one, uh, and you're getting the the watermelon and stuff too. I would say like um, I would say that uh, you know I'm not really getting the kind of peachy notes. I always expect a little bit more of a, a sharper thing from peach, if that makes sense. But I'm not getting too much in the way of a peachy quality out of this beer. And it was pe it is a kind of a peachy note that you're supposed to get from this uh, the HBC 431. So I'm not sure about that. I'd love to try that in a, but when it comes to a new hop, I always like trying things in a single hop beer. But I'm not getting too much peachy quality from this one. But overall, this is a really nice beer. And um, it does the way the fruity notes. They've got this one coming out as a kind of fruity, juicy thing, and I think that. That's what this brewery quite like because when you try their stouts and things like that, the stuff that they add berries and things to, they always have this really nice fruity juicy thing and they've managed to do it here with a more kind of straight up brewing method without adding stuff to the beer if you like. So that's a cool kind of afterthought that I've had on this beer but overall you know, it's a really nice one, this. It's a very straight up double IPA, but it definitely leans towards that fruity, juicy side of things. So, if you like a lot of kind of tropical fruits and stuff like that, this is one that I think you are uh, really going to quite enjoy. So, in terms of the mouthfeel, then, I think this one's a kind of mid bodied beer. Yeah, mid bodied. Um, Carbonation is quite smooth on this one, leans a little bit towards the oily side of things. Malt base is pretty smooth, there's a little touch of sweetness to it, but mainly it's quite a smooth malt base. Hoppy bitterness, there's a little bit of that in there. Um, I, th I would guess this beer is somewhere around the, maybe the 40-ish, the maybe 50 at a push IBU mark. It's not going to blow your head off in terms of bitterness, this one, and there's a lot of juicy fruity quality to the beer, but it's really nicely done, and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to recommend this one. It's a very nice, straight up, but easy drinking double IP. It's a bit dangerous how easy drinking this one is at 8.5%, but another cracking beer from Puyula and uh, I wouldn't expect anything less from these guys they always put some interesting things out there this one is definitely one of their more kind of straight up offerings though and it is cool to see that they can deal with both sides of the coin if that makes sense but yeah let's leave it at that one so uh, another really good beer from Puyula wouldn't expect anything less the Reda double IPA from Puyla Prulicoda in Tallinn in Estonia. I've been cool to do another Estonian beer for you and I hope you guys watching over there are enjoying them. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Check out my social media. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Puyla as well. Don't hesitate to get in touch and let me know some other Estonian breweries. I would love to know which other ones to look out for because a good number of them are available in Copenhagen. So I'd love to keep my eyes open, but thanks again for watching, and I will catch you guys very soon. The Read the Double IPA from Puyla Prulicoda in Tallinn in Estonia. Tervisex.